put that on. Everybody. Good morning, everyone, and it's um, wonderful to connect this way once again on this the last Sunday of the month, the fourth Sunday of Easter, and um, it's been great 
to do a Zoom service at least once a month where it, it uh, worship is much more intimate and we connect much better. And we, as we begin today's service, let's do so with an acknowledgement of the traditional territory upon which we gather physically and virtually. We are walking hand in hand on the safe and bountiful land, which is part of the Grand River watershed, traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee and neutral peoples who are fellow sojourners with us. We give thanks to the creator for this great gift and recognize our responsibility as treaty people to care for the land and waters that nourish us and give us strength. We also acknowledge that it is our duty to do more to learn about the rich history of this land to better understand our role as residents, neighbors, caretakers, and sojourners. Once again, welcome to all that are here with us on, on the screens. And uh, I'm Pastor Philip Mathai, pastor here at Mount Zion Lutheran Church. And we are on 29 West Mount Road South in Waterloo, Ontario. And as was announced last week, um, Lauren Lorne Wepler, one of our charter member, members had died and uh, the funeral was held on um, Tuesday. Again, a very small group because of the COVID protocols of the region. They were allowed 10 people, including the minister. And um, uh, as was announced, the offices would remain closed uh, till May 20th, but um, the mailbox and phone messages uh, will be checked from time to time. And uh, also soup delivery has been suspended till the 20th of May. And something else I would like to uh, bring to your attention is the interfaith community breakfast which is on May 19th at 7 a.m. It's uh, normally for a number of us, the 7 a.m. Uh, time uh, was a bit too much to get to Binghamton for the event. And, but now we can sit at home and participate in this. And uh, I will, you'll need to register through Eventbrite and I'll make sure after the service that um, I send out the links to all. And shall we begin our service with the gathering hymn?
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, <coughs> you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us, and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts chapter 4, verses 5 to 12. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of, of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Ah. Uh -huh. 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from 1 John. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay, lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> In the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. The theme that ties together the readings for the day may be subtle most Sundays. There have been occasions when I've thought as to why the committee that finalized the revised common lectionary put certain readings together. But today's readings do not raise any such questions. Even a casual observer would say, hey, there's something going on here with sheep and shepherds. Yes, traditionally, the fourth Sunday of Easter has been observed by the church as Good Shepherd Sunday. Various sections of John 10 are used on this day, the three church years. 
We focused on the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus to his disciples and friends the past Sundays. But today we shift our focus on the nature of God's work in the world through Jesus Christ. Here, he teaches his followers of himself, of who he is. The passage addresses the questions and fears that we have in coming face to face with the risen Lord whom we are struggling to understand. One morning, a mother was preparing pancakes for her two sons. I think I've used this illustration here earlier. But anyway, we'll go through it. Kevin and Ryan, ages five and three. The boys began to argue who, over who would get the first pancake. The mother thought this would be a nice teaching moment. And so she told the kids, if Jesus was sitting here, he would say, let my brother have the first pancake. I can wait. Kevin turned to his younger brother and said, Ryan, you be Jesus. It is the nature of Jesus to be loving, caring, self-sacrificial, and self-sacrificial. And what better metaphor than the one of the shepherd to illustrate to his disciples and us as to who he is. Many may question as to the relevance of this particular passage in our time and age. Most of us have not seen or experienced what a shepherd is. Even if we are familiar with modern sheep owners, it's nothing like the shepherd that's illustrated in this reading. Are there other metaphors or images we could use from our own time and age in place of that of a shepherd? How could we understand Jesus, his love, his sacrifice, and so on through images that are familiar to us? Would other metaphors sufficiently convey the message that John is trying to in the passage? Maybe what we are left with, with no comparable images of our own, is to comprehend the metaphor in its own context and understand what it means when we refer to Jesus as our shepherd. Right from the very beginning, we see as to how the followers of Jesus have sought for ways to express in words and images who this person Jesus is or was. John opened his gospel account with the grand vision of the one who was before all time and through whom all things came into being. Jesus was the very word of God made flesh. And they turned to the images of Jesus, images Jesus had taught them about himself. He told them that he was the vine and they were the branches. He told them that he was the bread of life and the living water that would quench their thirst forever. And he taught them that he was their shepherd. They were his flock. It's said that some of the earliest images of Jesus found in churches and tombs were not portrayals of Jesus on the cross or the infant in the manger. Rather, they pictured Jesus as the gentle shepherd. And it is said that what may be one of the earliest paintings of all in the catacombs is of a very young Jesus dressed in a short white tunic who has draped a lamb over his shoulders. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. What the reading invi is inviting us to is to explore what it means to understand the risen Christ as our shepherd. And what kind of a flock are we called to be? The text here speaks of security and intimacy. The shepherd knows the sheep and the sheep the shepherd. We all have that hunger to know and to be known. In the context of the pandemic, we have created virtual communities on the internet and in chat rooms. Zoom has become the medium of our choice 
that was the next best thing to personal coming together in this context. But this was, is a very different way of experiencing community than we are used to. Barbara Essex points out that forming authentic and holistic community is hard work. We dole out our parts of ourselves in stingy bits and pieces, avoiding being vulnerable with each other. We have a difficult time trusting each other. We no longer experience the intimacy of, a, of the physical presence of the other. In such a situation, one could genuinely ask how we can form community that is real and life-giving. Along with the rest of the world, the fear of how we will come out of this situation that we are in at the other end is real. The weight of the pandemic is weighing on all of us. We are anxious, we are uncertain. We could say that we do not really see the light at the other end of the tunnel. Just when we thought that we were coming out of the whole situation, things have taken a turn for the worst. We seem to have lost that connectedness. We seem to have lost that intimacy, that sense of community as we knew it. How do we as church provide that space where people can experience that sense of belonging? Jesus assures us that our fears are real, but there is a way to get beyond our fears and anxieties and the reading this morning speaks of dangers and protection. Our emptiness and our anxieties can be relieved because we have one who knows us and cares for us and walks with us and is our constant companion, our good shepherd. If you observe carefully, the community that John envisages here is diverse, open and inclusive. It included those who are not part of the group that was listening to Jesus. No one was excluded from this flock of the Good Shepherd. And this is a space where all belong and we are called to make it a reality even among us now. Diversity here is celebrated as a gift from God. During these days of heightened social awareness and injustices that are systemic, what unites us in our struggles is the reality of all belonging to the flock of this good shepherd. And it gives us reason to stand against injustice and pain that we see around us. It gives us reason to work towards the goal of all being able to experience life in its fullness. Last Thursday was Earth Day and the focus was on taking care of our planet. This planet ravaged by the selfishness of human beings. The notion of interconnectedness and interdependence is now not only really seen as being in the realm of human relationships but is also seen in the larger context of our connectedness and dependence on the rest of the created order. So here one could say that all creation comes under the care and the attention of the Good Shepherd. We are only stewards of the created realm and our lives are to be in harmony with it. Taking a cue from our indigenous sisters and brothers, could we see the land and the rest of creation also as our kin? When we do, when we do so, we are obligated to take care of the land just as we would any other members of the flock. The image of the good shepherd in understanding God in Christ is a powerful image for us during these days when we hunger for connection. In our moments of loneliness, isolation, alienation, or 
hopelessness. The Good Shepherd responds to our deepest yearnings for community by being with us, accompanying us in our fears, separation and insecurities, giving us that assurance of God's presence and peace, calling us to acceptance of all and caring for one another and the created order who is also our kin. Amen. To the whole church, let us affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this fourth Sunday of Easter, let us pray for the church, the earth, and all in any need. God of goodness and mercy, we pray for the church, that bishops, pastors, and deacons be upheld in their tasks as shepherds of your flock, and that congregations persevere in their ministries of nurture of the young and care for the aging. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for members of other world religions that there be an end to interreligious strife, that during Ramadan, Muslims be strengthened for lives of prayer and service. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the earth, 
that green pastures and clear waters be provided for herds and flocks, those raised for human use and those living wild, that farm fields be saved from storm or drought, and that we would be responsible stewards of what you have entrusted us as humans and care for the well-being of the rest of the created order. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for the nations of the earth, that governments cease aggression against their neighbors, that peace come to Afghanistan, Syria, and Myanmar, and that tensions on the Russian and Ukrainian border would ease. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for justice in our land, that our criminal justice system continue to also hear the cries of the marginalized, that ethnic and economic prejudices cease their holds on our people, and that there be peace in our streets and in our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We, pro we pray for those who are hungry, the unemployed, the underemployed, those living in refugee camps or on our streets, migrants seeking a better life, that they be fed. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for Pastor Philip and Joy and their families and share their concern for their extended families, friends, and colleagues as we hear of the dire pandemic surge in India. We give you thanks for the news that their families are safe today and ask you to have mercy on all the people of India and on all the people here and around the world who are affected by the pandemic in any way. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who are sick or suffering, for those stricken with the coronavirus, especially in India and Brazil, for the children who have known continual sorrow, and for those we name here before you, Margaret, David, Marjorie, Barb, George, Betty, Delphina, Jake, Julian, Rosalie, Kristen, for James Rigard recuperating from his surgery, for the Wepler family mourning the death of Lorne, and those others that we remember in silence. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We praise you for all the sheep of your fold, each lamb of your own flock. Bring us with all the saints to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share a sign of peace with those around us and also those on the screen. Peace be with you. Peace. Thank you. 
Let us pray. God of love, you called us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is our calling and our joy to give thanks and praise to you, O Holy One. You summon forth new life from the silence of the grave and abundant hope where none was to be found. And so with all living things and the earth itself, with the women at the tomb, the first witnesses of the resurrection, and with all your people of every time and place, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O Holy One, for the universe beyond our knowing, for creatures great and small, and for the wondrous web of life into which we have been woven. We give thanks that in your wisdom you create all people in your image, yellow and brown, black and white, calling us to be caretakers of one another and of your world. In each generation, you deliver us through the flood, bring us forth from bondage, guide us through the wilderness, sustain us in exile and call us toward your land of promise. <laughs> you sent Jesus, our brother and Lord, who embodied your will, who reveals your heart and who teaches us what it means to be fully human. On the night in which he allowed himself to be handed over, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and gave it to his followers saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, gave thanks and offered it to his followers saying, Take and eat. This is the new covenant in my blood offered for you and for all people. Do this to remember me. So in this season of resurrection and new life, we remember we remember all whose blood is poured out in violence in its countless forms. 
We remember all who offer up their lives in service to others and to you. And most of all, we remember the new life of the risen Christ into which you call us this day. Pour out your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be filled with your grace and by your grace fill us with the resurrected life of Christ that we may be living symbols of your new life for all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ broken for us. blood of Christ shed for us. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. And may the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ the victor, undefiled, 
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Just a note to everyone, the information about registering for the Interfaith IGR prayer breakfast is on our website. And Karen reminded me about that. So it's you can go to the website and register, but I'll send out an email anyway. So thank you.
And I would like to invite your prayers for uh, Pastor Dale Finch and his wife, Donna. Um, Dale has terminal cancer. Um, Donna is caring for him at home with lots of medical help coming in, uh, but he is declining rather rapidly the last few days. So he's been a good friend of mine and a, and a pastoral colleague. So Dale Finch and his wife, Donna. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Looks like we've forgotten how to unmute and talk to each other. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> My there sound was off until uh, until Bill read from First John, and all of a sudden the sound was back again. So I heard part of the first hymn and then nothing for a while. But uh -oh. I don't know why that was. It was loud and clear after that. So anyway, it is what it is. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Everything, it was a beautiful service. The whole thing was just so well done. Thank you, Amy. Yeah. Very welcome. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed the service when we can see each other. Yeah, it's nice. Isn't yeah, me too. Yeah. That is just. Mm -hmm. I agree. I yeah. agree. But then I don't get an opportunity to wear my vestments and stuff. Oh, you like to dress up? <laughs> you could, you could do it anyway if you want to. You want to wear them? <laughs> Stand up a couple of times so that we can see them draped over you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just joking. But yes, this adds a different dimension to totally live stream, just live streaming our services. Yeah, yeah definitely. exactly. Yeah. Pastor Philip, the stole you've been wearing recently has small little squares on it. It looks like. <coughs> what? Um, can you tell me more about that stole? It, those are crosses uh, that oh. are woven into it. It's a traditional 